براہ راست اس وقت آپ کو مناسب دکھا رہے ہیں وزیر اعظم شہباز شریف سیکٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ کے ہمراہ موجود ہیں سیکٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ انٹونیو گوڈفرز کی نیشنل فلڈ ریسپانس سینٹر کوارڈینیشن آمد ہوئی ہے اور اس وقت موجود ہیں وزیر اعظم شہباز شریف سیکٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ کے ساتھ سیکٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ کو حالیہ سیلاب کی تباہ کاریوں پر بریفنگ دی جا رہی ہے Honorable Secretary Generals of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, respected dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of Chairman National Flood Response and Coordination Center, I welcome you all at NFRCC. In today's session, the sequence presented is as flashed on the screen. We'll have opening remarks by Chairman, uh, Chairman NFRCC followed by overview of flight damages and responses by national coordinator. Remarks by Deputy Chairman and FRCC and closing remarks by Chairman will follow. Then we will have a joint presser from the same location and after the joint presser we will move for the group photo outside. Now I will invite the Chairman and FRCC for his opening remarks please. Thank you. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آنبل سیکٹر جنرل منسٹرز گورنمنٹ آفیشلز اینڈ آرمی آفیسرز السلام علیکم اینڈ گڈ آفٹرنون ون سیکنڈ آئی وڈ لائک ٹو تھینک یو فار یور وزٹ to Pakistan of uh, great encouragement you have brought with you message of empathy support for the people of Pakistan <clears throat> and more so for the people who are marooned and who are facing unprecedented difficulties and miseries government of Pakistan along with provincial governments and all stakeholders including armed forces of Pakistan are all <clears throat> teamed together to provide relief and rescue to these millions of people to be very exact 33 million people are absolutely in dire conditions in the entire country. As we speak, efforts are in full gear. People are being removed to safe places. Food and shelter are being offered. But the challenges absolutely beyond human capacities yet humans have to handle it and we are I would like to thank you for all your support support from different countries and organizations and your visit to Pakistan will provide you a first hand info as to what is happening in the forward nook and corner of our country. Thank you very much for this opportunity and we are very grateful for this uh, action of solidarity on your part. Thank you. Honorable Prime Minister, Excellencies, 
I would like to express my enormous appreciation in this coordination center to all those women and men that have been working tirelessly to support the victims of this unprecedented natural disaster. Um, I know how civil servants, uh, volunteers, government officers, uh, local government officers, uh, the army, the NGOs uh, have been working together uh, in a remarkable way to mitigate the suffering of the Pakistani people. Humanity has declared war on nature, and nature is striking back. But nature is blind. It is not striking back on those that have more contributed to the war on nature. Uh, Pakistan has given little contribution to climate change, but uh, Pakistan is one of the most dramatically impacted hotspots by the consequences of climate change. So it's like nature has, has, has attacked the wrong target. <laughs> it should be those that are more responsible for uh, climate change that should have to face this kind of challenge, and if that would be the case, probably we would not have the present situation in, in climate change. So there is an obligation of the international community to massively support Pakistan in these circumstances, and there is an obligation of the international community to take seriously the need to drastically reduce emissions, and at the same time, to support the countries that need to invest in adaptation, in resilience and recovery, as it is the case of Pakistan. And my voice is entirely at the service of the Pakistani government and the Pakistani people, and the whole UN system is entirely at the service of Pakistan. Now that our contribution is, contribution is limited, we know that what we do is a drop in the ocean of the needs, but we are totally committed and Pakistan is a country that I have in my heart. I have worked many years with Pakistan. When I was High Commissioner for Refugees, I've always seen the enormous generosity of Pakistanis uh, hosting and protecting and assisting Afghan refugees. And I've always witnessed the enormous generosity of Pakistanis helping each other. Uh, in uh, past circumstances that I witnessed, the earthquake, the other floods, the dramatic displacement caused by terrorist activities. I always seen an enormous sense of solidarity, an enormous sense of uh, uh, community feeling in the Pakistani people. And so uh, my admiration for this country and its people is limitless. And my solidarity with uh, what the Pakistanis are suffering without having contributed to that suffering is total. I am entirely at the disposal of the government of people in Pakistan, and I'll do my best to raise awareness in the international community and to mobilize the whole UN system supporting Pakistan, the Pakistani government, and the Pakistani people. Thank you very much. Very Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, Honorable Secretary General, it is a great privilege for me to welcome you to this National Flood Response Coordination Center set up by the Prime Minister. Uh, I am the Deputy Chairman, I uh, represent the Prime Minister. We do daily operational uh, details here uh, by looking at the situation of the flood and relief operations. Uh, I would first like to acknowledge that your message to the world community before coming here has really made and left a big impression with the people of Pakistan. Your words like the world must wake up from the sleepwalk and it is monsoon on a steroid have uh, almost become common phrases which people are referring to from your message. You have been associated with Pakistan when Pakistan was battling Afghan conflict and influx of Afghan refugees. Today, as Secretary General, you come to us when we are battling climate refugees. There are millions of people who have become displaced because of the climate disaster that has hit Pakistan. 
Uh, we faced super floods in 2010, but 20 million people were affected in 2010 with the super floods. But this uh, climate disaster that has hit us has affected more than 33 million people. So the scale is so big that, as you also mentioned, that any world, any country in the world, if was hit with this disaster, it would be impossible for that country to face the consequences. Uh, we have, we are facing four challenges. One, that these floods, with the flash floods and the hill torrents and the heavy rains, which largely took place in those areas which historically have never had even moderate rains. So those regions did not have the infrastructure to deal with such heavy downpour. Uh, so there is a huge infrastructure loss to all the areas in terms of roads, rails, uh, power transmission lines, uh, gas transmission lines, irrigation system, schools, hospitals, water and sanitation, uh, dams. You know, there is a big uh, damage to the infrastructure for which a joint damage uh, and need assessment study has begun with the help of World Bank, Asian Development Bank and UN and their experts are working with our Ministry of Planning and Development which is coordinating this study and we hope to have some initial estimates ready before the Prime Minister leaves for the UN uh, Assembly, General Assembly and the detailed study we hope would also be ready with us in four to six weeks. The second important challenge uh, Mr. Secretary General we face is the loss of livelihoods. All of these people have lost their livelihoods. They have seen their crops being destroyed before their eyes. They have seen their sheep, their goats, their livestock being swept away by the ferocious currents of these flash uh, floods that hit them. Their orchards have been destroyed. So their lifelong savings have gone. And also these farming communities store the grain for their whole year as a safety net. Though that grain has been lost, their seeds for the next harvest have been swept, swept away by the water. So they are virtually standing empty today and we have a big challenge to uh, put them back to life. And these are not a few hundred or thousand, about you know, 33 million people, majority of them uh, will require new uh, livelihoods. Then, Mr. Secretary General, Pakistan faces two more challenges, deceleration of the growth as a result of this enormous calamity. We are expecting plus minus 3 percent uh, drop in our GDP growth rate, which was supposed to be at 5 percent. And that will have enormous impact on the employment, on the poverty in the country. We were already facing very high inflation partly for two reasons. One, because of the IMF program for which Prime Minister took some very harsh decisions, uh, and also because of the Ukraine crisis that has put a super cycle, you know, shock for the whole country, uh, whole world. So we will have to battle with this high inflation also. So in this backdrop, this center is doing a very important role by coordinating civil, military, federal government, provincial governments, relief, rescue efforts. And uh, we are also working simultaneously to build our next plan to build a more resilient infrastructure. And we hope that with your help, we will be able to mobilize the international community so that uh, they can help us as it has been. And you have been championing. I think I don't need to say anything because the way you have articulated the challenge that Pakistan faces, nobody else can articulate it better. So with your leadership, with your support, we hope that Pakistan will come back. Uh, Pakistani nation uh, ha is a very resilient nation. We have been tested before with many calamities. Each time, Pakistani people have fought back. And with the support of friends like you, we hope that Pakistan will again uh, rebound and it will be back to normal. And we will be able to give our people a decent and good quality of life that they deserve. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim.
Honorable Secretary General, United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres. Uh, sir, I welcome you to the National Flood Response Coordination Center. Uh, we would have liked to show you a small video clip, but due to the shortage of time, uh, you have other pressing engagements where you have to go. So I'll just go over the salience of the brief that I wanted to present to you. Next. 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 Sir, Pakistani floods started since 14... Dikhaat tiyan, sir. Dikhaat. Dikhaat. Sir. Dikhaat nahi dara. So as you would have seen that there is a huge calamity which has befallen Pakistan. And in this huge calamity, the problem that has come is because of the rains that were five times higher than what we normally expect. If you see, in Sin province, normally it would have been just 35 to 50 millimeter of rain in a complete season. And this year, it has been over 600 millimeter on the average which is 508% higher than the average rainfall. This is also because of the changes that are occurring because of the ENSO and the Equino, and this has a strong bearing on the monsoon region. Next. So this map would show you 
what kind of rainfall we have received. If you, if you would just remain on the red, you will find that this is the entire Sindh province. And in the north, you have the KPK. Both of them have received over 500 millimeters of rain, and at one place it was 752. This is near the world record of rain at any one place. We have had five spells till now. Next. So this purple will show you where water is standing as of now. This is in itself a complete lake, 100 kilometers wide. Differentiation between the Indus River and this place is near impossible. Next. If we compare it to the previous calamities, we had a loss of $5.2 billion in the earthquake of 2005. And the floods of 2010, which were one-eighth of this calamity, were 12 to 43 billion. This time, one-third of Pakistan is underwater. The losses will be much higher and much bigger. Next. So the area that we have underwater is bigger than UK, New Zealand, Portugal, Ecuador, or the states of Michigan and Colorado of the US. As you can see, we have lost 750,000 livestock as of now, and huge tracts of land, around 4 million acres, are underwater, which will affect our crops. Next. It is provisionally estimated that over $30 billion would be lost in this catastrophe. Next. Coming over to the Sindh province, as I've already shown, almost entire Sindh is underwater. And large tracts have water over six to eight feet. Once this started, nine locations were underwater. But now, we at two places, the national railway track is underwater. And we cannot run the national rail from Islamabad to Karachi. Next. This will just give you a glimpse of the water. If you could see Hamal Lake on 4th August, and now on 28th August, it seems that the entire area is Hamal Lake. Similarly, Kambar Shadat Court, Shikarpur are all underwater. Next. So in the other provinces, we are out of rescue, but in Sindh, we are still continuing to do the rescue operations because the water is flowing downwards and has gone to Manchar Lake, which is the biggest freshwater lake in Asia. This lake has burst at three places and its water is now flowing towards the Indus. Today in the morning we had to make a cut on the National Railway Line as well as the N55 to make the water go towards the Indus. We are hopeful that in the next week or so the situation will start stabilizing, but for one week we have 160,000 people still in the area. Next. In the south of Sindh, the LBOD is carrying a large amount of water, but our districts are still underwater. And in Badin, the LBOD has broken its banks and is flooding the areas beside it. Next. So this is Monjadoro, the oldest site in Pakistan, 5000 BC. It has undergone 740 millimeters of rain. The great stupa of Monjadoro is crumbling because of this very rain. Next. So these are the damages in Sindh. Next. In Balochistan, you would see uh, red and pink. These are the districts which have been affected. Four districts are still underwater. At the start of the uh, floods, Balochistan was cut off from the uh, nation. All national highways were cut off. But uh, with hard work and effort, we have been able to restore that link in the last month or so. Next. Now, we are left with only three places, and the major problem is with the much uh, bridge, which collapsed. And till that bridge is constructed, no railway traffic can run from anywhere in Pakistan to Quetta. Next. Next. So this is the condition of the railway lines. 
Next. In KPK, a large area was affected, 17 districts in which we still have water in two and the rest have been cleared. Sir, on your arrival today, we had one last location opened up at Kalam. Next. Next. Kalam has been opened today, sir, in the morning. Next. These are just a few glimpses of what happened. Next. In Punjab, it was only basically two major districts where only at one place we have standing water. Rest Punjab is doing well. Next. This was the water which stood in different areas. Next. Rajan, you would see, sir, it has still water standing over there. Next. In GB and AGK, the rainfall was less due to climate change. This is the area which traditionally got rain. But this year, there hasn't been any much rain in the area. Next. This was hill torrents which were taking away everything. Wherever it rained, it rained profusely. And at other places in AJK, no rain. Mangala Dam is presently at 50% capacity. While at other places, we have almost 10 times worth of water standing at different places. Next. Next. So in response to this, the Prime Minister had ordered the setting up of the National Flood Response and Coordination Center. Our mandate is to synergize and articulate the national flood effort. And we are doing it through assessment, coordination, forecasting, and lastly, policy recommendations. Next. So this is the organization where all uh, stakeholders are a part of it. S uh, ministers of the government, as well as provincial uh, governments are part of it. And of course, the military. Next. This is the military organization. Next. So the relief efforts that have taken place till now we have already issued 2,98,000, but this is just a drop in the bucket. Perhaps much more is required. Next. Similarly, we are receiving help from our international uh, bodies as well as our friends all over the world, including UAE, China, Uzbekistan, Qatar, France, Jordan, USA, and of course, the UN is always at the front of all these things. Next. This is what is all arriving in the next coming days. Next. We have also established a number of relief camps and medical camps. Next. And collection centers. The army is collecting at a number of places from where we transport this to the areas affected. Next. And this is all that we have transported till now. Next. Some glimpses of the relief effort going on. Next. 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 Sir, we have done a lot of coordination with OCHA. And uh, last week, we had a coordination conference over here in which we called all the major NGOs and we coordinated with them how this system is going to work. The UNRC uh, helped us in that matter. And we continue to work with them in order to improve how the uh, NGOs provide help to the people and where we require it. So it's a coordinated effort between the uh, civil government, the military, as well as the NGOs, and under the auspices of the UN in certain areas. Next. Sir, we have started the joint survey in Balochistan. It has started in GB, Punjab, and KPK. It will start by Monday. And Sindh, because we are still in the rescue phase, will start once the rescue phase is over. Next. Sir, the Prime Minister of pa Pakistan has very kindly uh, given 28 billion rupees to the BISP, which has, out of which 20 billion has already been distributed to the people at 25,000 rupees per household, and this is being increased to 70 billion, and which will provide almost 1.5 million families will be provided this money. In addition, waiving off of the electricity bill in all those areas where uh, there is uh, water standing, and deferment of payment of agriculture loans, which will be approximately 52 billion rupees once it is done. Next. Sir, we have already seen uh, how we are looking at it. We are Next. The concept is very simple, sir. We, we are in a rescue phase in Sindh, but in other areas we have gone to relief, and we will go to rehab and reconstruction. At present, we require tents, we require uh, mosquito nets, and food. But once we go to the rehab stage, 
we have to reconstruct in major areas uh, disaster resistance structures for which help would be required from the international community. Next. Sir, this is the plan of action which has been approved by the Prime Minister and which we will be following uh, to, uh, to the hilt. Uh, we, have already, we are already in the rescue. I feel that another two, three weeks this will continue. We will go to relief. Uh, relief will last in certain areas even up to six months because of the standing water. And then the survey is going on which will complete by the end of October in most areas. And from then on, we will, go, we will move forward. Infrastructure is being opened as we speak and very few areas are left. While the national infrastructure, we would like to rehabilitate some of the national highways and the railway line. And now, sir, this last aspect of compensation is already in full swing. As I said, the Prime Minister has already given the money and 20 billion has already been distributed. The rest will be distributed in this month or so. Next, please. Sir, our lines of effort include immediate relief, damage assessment, survey of infrastructure, and then redesigning of infrastructure. And then we will carry out studies of long-term weather effects so that we can do construction of disaster resistance structures. And of course, one of the most important things that we have learned from these floods is restoring the drainage system, which we will go after in a big way. Next. Sir, this uh, NFRCC basically ensures better coordination between federation and provinces, ensures efficient relief distribution. And of course, it, we are facilitating the NGOs, correct damage assessment, and of course, data correction and uniformity would be there. We want immediate road and railway connectivity. Hopefully, we will have rail, railway connectivity in the next two to three days. And of course, the credible joint survey. Next, please. And we are preparing the health response plan, the food security plan, the draining system rehabilitation, education in displaced areas, and of course, improved information flow. Next. Sir, thank you very much, sir. That is all for my side. May I ask you two, two questions? Okay. I've read in the press in the last two days that there was a lake in which you were worried about the... the is it uh, uh, controlled? It has a total capacity of 125 feet. It could rise to... It rose to 124 feet. Therefore, we had to apply breaching sections at two places. The water is out. It has flooded five tehsils. Almost 164,000 people are affected in that area. The situation is still fluid. We still have boats in the area rescuing people. However, there is a glimmer of hope as of today that we have broken the rail, national railway line as well as the national highway, N55, and the water has started pouring into the Indus. This will take about a week to stabilize. But because the water is coming from Logistan, we feel that our danger period will still lurk for another month or so. And, I mean, the, the monsoons now uh, changed. Sir. Is there any risk of additional heavy rains? Sir, the, uh, what we have discussed with the Met Department is that till now we don't have a danger of the weather coming up again. However, there is a system coming up on the 25th of September, which we are watching very verily. Uh, they say that it will head towards India, but because of this climate change, you are uh, never sure. And we will continue to watch and see. If it does turn to our side, we would like to be prepared for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency, uh, for your time. And thank you for this uh, very <clears throat> good presentation. Uh, Secretary General, I think uh, uh, you have, what we have seen over here on the screen is a glaring manifestation of the climate change which has created this havoc in Pakistan. Today, Pakistan has faced the brunt. Tomorrow, it could be other countries and other regions. Therefore, I think it's high time that we take notice of this situation. As you have seen, we are passing through the phase of rescue and relief and soon we'll be entering into the phase of reconstruction and rehabilitation for which uh, we need infinite amount of uh, funding. Uh, Pakistan is doing its best with its meager resources and of course we thank international community 
for contributing in this behalf. And thank you, your organization, for supporting us. But uh, unless we get sufficient support in terms of relief, in terms of uh, repairing our uh, damaged infrastructure, we will be in trouble. We are uh, obviously completely undaunted by this uh, challenge. Like an iron resolve that we will, inshallah, be over the hump. But we need international support. And your <clears throat> talk today here and in the Prime Minister's office was like a Pakistani speaking from the core of his heart. Again, you have repeated the same words. Thank you very much. We are very grateful for your sincerity of purpose, your feelings for Pakistan, and together we shall be through this crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Secretary General Antonio Godres is worked in FRC me mojood hai on hai Pakistan me halia selap ki tabah kariyon ke hawale se or nuksanat ke hawale se brief kiya gaya wazir azam shahbaz sharif ka is maqe per kehna tha ke Antonio Godres salamat asrin se izhari yag jahti ke liye aye hai UN Secretary General ke Pakistan amad per unka khair maktam karte hai UN Secretary General ke janet se kaha gaya ke mosmiyati tabili se Pakistan mutasir ho raha hai hukumat pak fawj aur اور سماجی تنظیمیں سلام متاثرین کی مدد کر رہی ہیں یو این سیکٹری جنرل کی جانب سے کہا گیا کہ پاکستان وہ ملک ہے جو ان کے دل کے بہت قریب ہے سیکٹری جنرل یو این کا این ایف آر سی کا دورہ سیکٹری جنرل اقوامی متحدہ انٹرونیو گوٹرس کو پاکستان میں سیلاب کی موجودہ صورتحال امدادی کارمائیوں کے حوالے سے بریف کیا گیا اقوامی متحدہ کے سیکٹری جنرل انٹرونیو گوٹرس دو روزہ دورے پر پاکستان میں موجود ہیں اور انہوں نے این ایف آر سی کا دورہ کیا وزیراعظم شہباز شریف کی جانب سے کہا گیا کہ یو این سیکٹری جنرل کو پاکستان آمد پر خیر مقدم کرتے ہیں انہوں نے کہا کہ انٹرونیو گوٹرس سلام متاثرین سے اظہار یک جہتی کے لیے آئے ہیں انٹرونیو گوٹرس کی جانب سے کہا گیا کہ موسمیاتی تبدیلیوں سے پاکستان متاثر ہو رہا ہے حکومت پاکستان پاک فوج اور سماجی تنظیمیں سلام متاثرین کی بھرپور مدد کر رہی ہیں متاثرین کی مدد کرنے والوں کو سراہتے ہیں اور ان کا شکریہ دا کرتا ہوں کہ وہ آج پاکستان تشریف لائے ہیں پاکستان کے عوام کے ساتھ ہمدردی دکھانے کے لیے اور ان کو یہ پیغام دینے کے لیے کہ جبکہ اس وقت پاکستان تاریخ کے سب سے بڑے سیلاب اور تباہی سے دوچار ہے آج جناب سیکٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ کے وہ پاکستان کے عوام کے ساتھ کھڑے ہیں یکجیتی کا اہزار کرنے کے لیے اور پاکستان کے عوام اور خصوصی طور پر وہ کروڑوں لوگ جو اس وقت پانی میں گھرے ہوئے ہیں صوبہ سندھ بلوچستان کے پی پنجاب اور دوسرے علاقوں میں وہ یہ بتانے آئے ہیں کہ ہمیں نہ صرف پاکستان کے عوام کے ساتھ اس وقت کھڑے ہونا ہے بلکہ وہ تمام اپنی جو ان کی ڈومین میں جو بھی ذرائع ہیں وہ ان کو عمل میں لائیں گے اور پاکستان کی اس مصیبت کی گھڑی میں عوام کو ریلیف دلانے کے لیے اور جو ہمارے پل ہزاروں سڑکیں اور ٹرانسپورٹ سسٹم کمیونکیشن سسٹم جو تباہ ہو گیا ہے اس کی بحالی اور مرمت کے لیے جو کچھ بھی ان سے بن پڑا یہ کریں گے لیکن آج انہوں نے جو بطور سیکٹری جنرل جو گفتگو کی ہے میں اس سے بہت متاثر ہوا ہوں اگر پاکستانیوں سے بڑھ کے نہیں تو پاکستانیوں کی طرح انہوں نے گفتگو کی ہے ان کو احساس کو جانا ہے ان کو دکھ میں شریک ہوئے ہیں اور دل کی اتھا گھرائیوں سے بات کی ہے میں انہیں الفاظ کے ساتھ جناب 
सेक्रेटरी जनरल का एक मरतबा फिर शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ नाव सेक्रेटरी जनरल इट्स ओवर टू यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर allow me first a few words to the pakistani people and then to people around the world to the pakistani people i am no stranger to pakistan i have a love affair with your country since 17 years ago when i started my functions as high commissioner for refugees and i've always witnessed your enormous generosity receiving at the moment more than 6 million afghan refugees protecting assisting them sharing your meager resources with them and i've seen your generosity helping each other family helping family community helping community when i came in 2005 because of the earthquake when i came in 2010 because of the floods and when i came later during the uh, dramatic incursion of terrorism around the swat valley and further when they are close to islamabad and hundreds of thousands of people were displaced and uh, i was there w- with them and so i know what it means for the pakistani people this unprecedented natural disaster there is no memory of anything similar to what has happened with uh, this impact of climate change on pakistan and i want to reassure you that we'll do everything possible to mobilize the international community to support your country and to support all of you in this very dramatic situation in which beyond the numbers the numbers are appalling but beyond the numbers I see the families that lost their loved ones. I see the families that lost their houses. I see the families that lost their crops. I see the families that lost their crops, that lost their jobs, and that are living in desperate conditions at the present moment. And I've seen the enormous effort of response from uh, civil servants the government from the army from the ngos from the population uh, in an extraordinary demonstration of uh, solidarity within the borders of pakistan but i want to say a few words to the international community pakistan needs massive financial support to respond to this crisis that have costed according to some estimates i've heard today about 30 billion dollars and counting and that that support is entirely necessary and it is not a matter of solidarity it's a matter of justice pakistan has not contributed in a meaningful way to climate change the level of emissions of this country is relatively low but pakistan is one of the most dramatically impacted countries by climate change in the front line of the impact of climate change and uh, it is absolutely essential that this is recognized by the international community especially by those countries that have more contributed to climate change and that effective solidarity effective justice is now shown by mobilizing massive supports for relief for rehabilitation or for reconstruction after these devastating uh, impacts of the monsoon plus the accelerated melting of glaciers and at the same time this is the moment to say that uh, we are heading into a disaster we have waged war on nature and nature is striking back and striking back in a devastating way today in pakistan tomorrow in any of your countries and uh, we need to stop the increase of emissions and start reducing them now <coughs> and at the same time we need to mobilize much more resources to support those countries that need to build resilience it is what is called adaptation that need to create the conditions to resist to the impact of these devastating disasters caused by climate change and at the same time as a matter of justice to put seriously on the table in the next conference of states party uh, of the convention the question of loss and damage that is 
something that has been, until now, uh, not discussed seriously in the international community. This is a time to mobilize the efforts of everybody against climate change, and this is a time to mobilize every goodwill in the world to support massively the Pakistani people in this dramatic hour. You have been extremely kind, generous, and passionate. Just Your help to Pakistan will help helpless people in this country. Just Thank you. Well, I told you that this uh, great human being, Sikh Jal, has spoken today language which is not only understood by the people of Pakistan, but by all those who have a human heart, who are compassionate, who have empathy, and who, have, who are generous, speaking from the core of the heart. And uh, I am deeply touched by his message today, by his uh, statement today. This is my first meeting with him. But uh, after having met him, it seems that we have been together for many years. Thank you very much, General Secretary. And I assure you, whatever support we get from your institution and through your institution, I give you my word of honor, along with all these ladies and gentlemen sitting on this table, ministers, general officers, uh, government officials, ladies and gentlemen, that every penny we get from you or from where, forever, we will spend it most transparently and in the interest of the suffering humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Asim Shahbaz Sharif or Akwami Mutida ke Secretary General ki Mushtarka press conference aap mulahisa kar rahe the Wazir Asim Shahbaz Sharif ne kaha Akwami Mutida ki himayat aur taafun bahut ahmiyat ka hamil hai aur ye daura bahut ahmiyat ka hamil hai UN Secretary General ki salam utasirin se izhari jag jahti ke liye aamad par khair magdam karte hain Pakistan is waqt salab aur tabahi se duchar hai Sindh aur Balochistan mein mutadid ilake aur log salab se gire huye hain Secretary General Akwami Mutida Antonio Gautrez ne Mushtarka press conference میں کہا کہ میں پاکستان کے لیے اجنبی نہیں میں جانتا 